Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are gonna dive back into the multiverse, back into the Venomverse, and we're gonna talk about four stories or four versions of symbiotes that are in four stories that uh, kind of revolve around the X-Men in a way, which is really cool. So this is something I was wanting to work on for a while, and, I, and these are some stories that were left over that we said we were gonna talk about before. And I said, ah, screw it. You know what? These all kind of fit because they all kind of originate from a book that starred the X-Men or have like main X-Men villains as the antagonist of the story. So there's like kind of a good mix and match here. And I like this and I think it'll surprise some of you the stories we talk about. So first we're gonna talk about a variation of Venom that was in an alternate universe in the story from Extraordinary X-Men by Jeff Lemire and Humberto Ramos. And in this one, you had Old Man Logan from the Old Man Logan universe. He was now stuck in the regular Marvel universe because the regular Marvel universe Wolverine was dead. And so yeah, comic books, right? And so with Old Man Logan now in the universe, he teams up with Storm and her new team of X-Men, and they try to, they're trying to basically prevent the Terrigen Mists uh, from the Inhumans to create more pseudo-mutants or, you know, stuff like that. So they're trying to rein that in a little bit because it's getting a little bit out of control, or if something does happen and more mutants do pop up, they want to be there to welcome them to the X-Men. So it's kind of, that's kind of basically their mission. Uh, and so Storm is leading a team. She has Colossus on her team. Um, they end up getting like an alternate universe Nightcrawler because also in the comics at this point, Nightcrawler has been killed. So they find an alternate universe one, uh, who, one who's not afraid to kill, which is pretty interesting. Still has like religious beliefs a little bit, but more willing to kill. So it's not the Kurt Wagner that we know. And this team, as they're training new mutants and everything and putting a new team together, and they have Cerebro, which is a giant sentinel that is kind of like their version of Cerebro, but it can detect when new mutants are popping up. And so they have all this equipment. They have the X-Mansion, they call it X-Haven. They're ready to go. And then all of a sudden, they get a blip on their radar. 600 new mutants have been created or popped up out of nowhere. So they go and investigate, and they have Colossus go in with some kids, some of the students, to go investigate. And when they get there, they disappear. And everyone's like, what happened? So the X-Men then, Storm and Old Man Logan, and the new Nightcrawler and everything, they go and investigate, and they find out that Sugar Man, uh, a creature from the Age of Apocalypse universe that made his way to the Marvel Universe, yeah, man, X-Men comics gets wild and very confusing, and there's a lot of characters from other universes popping into this one. Um, but so Sugar Man has created 600 new embryos and that are already, you know, can be become mutants. They're ready to just grow in a lab and become new mutants and that's what sugar man wants he's trying to repopulate the mutant empire because he like his lord apocalypse on his world they want to take over and he so he's like i need more mutants to take over and if i create 600 new ones that kind of look at me as like a father figure i could get them to do my bidding i guess so the x-men are like no we got to save these embryos whatever they are we got to save them and so they you know go into this mission and when they get there colossus is gone the students are gone sugar man's gone and the 600 embryos are gone into a portal that leads to another universe and that's where venom comes in because as the x-men go into this other universe and they find out that the kids and colossus that were over there they had been there for like 200 plus days they'd been there for a while and colossus got into a battle with apocalypse's four horsemen which he always has but in this universe the four horsemen were actually moon knight which is really cool you got deadpool you had a version of man thing and then you had venom and uh, and then in this battle colossus was able to defeat man thing but he does get captured. So Apocalypse turns Colossus now into his fourth horseman war. So yeah, really, really cool. And then the X-Men go in, they have to battle their friend Colossus and then this version of Venom, which ends up bonding to Wolverine, uh, bonds with old man Logan. And he of course knows what it is because in his world, he knew a Venom, he knew a version of it, uh, just the regular Venom, but also one that uh, latched onto a T-Rex, which we're going to actually talk about in this episode. So yeah, we're going to travel all around the multiverse, uh, but like I said, a lot of X-Men related stuff. So this version of Wolverine, like I said, he's met a ver you know versions of the symbiote and stuff before, it bonds with him, and it turns him into you know, like a Wolverine hybrid you know, horseman for Apocalypse, and while Storm and Nightcrawler are dealing with Apocalypse and fighting him... And then magic is like, you know, traversing limbo and trying to get back to the others and save everyone. And then you have Colossus who's been converted into a horseman. And then you got all the X-Men fighting each other and fighting villains and everything. It's just a whole war going on. And then you have Wolverine in the middle with the symbiote on him. And he's begging to be set free. So Jean Grey, the young Jean Grey that's uh, during this timeline, she goes into Wolverine's mind and she's trying to help him separate from the symbiote. And so there's an internal battle while there's an external battle going on. And I thought it was really well done. And it's really cool to see Humberto Ramos like draw the symbiote again because I always loved his stuff on Spectacular Spider-Man with uh, Paul Jenkins. And so him 
coming to this and, and doing like X-Men, you know, which I love when he draws X-Men too, and having them fight the symbiote is just really cool. So in the end, the symbiote does get separated. It gets vanquished by Jean Grey and her powers, her Phoenix powers. And then the team, you know, weakens and defeats Apocalypse. But then they have to save his life in order to save the world in a way, because without Apocalypse attached to his world, that world will crumble and die. So, yeah, you know, typical X-Men stuff. You know, we can't really kill our bad guy, you know, because we're trying to be heroes. But also there's a bigger picture thing going on here. And so uh, so they have to try to save Apocalypse in the end. But this was a fun story and it's told over four volumes. But this in particular, where the symbiote shows up, was just in volume two of the series. So if you're out there and you want to read this book, Extraordinary X-Men, just look for volume two for the Apocalypse War story. I think there's also a separate trade that has all the tie-in issues to it too, which has more appearances from the symbiote as well. Uh, but nothing super substantial that I felt like needed to be talked about in this one, because the biggest moment I felt in this story with the symbiote was when it attached to Wolverine. So very cool alternate universe uh, Venom that is you know bound to Apocalypse, which is really neat. And we're actually going to see another version kind of like that coming up here. And then also we're gonna dip back into the Old Man Logan universe right now. So Old Man Logan is a world created by Mark Millar. And this was when he was writing the Wolverine book monthly, where we go into the future, a possible future, where Wolverine was duped into killing the X-Men. Uh, what ended up happening is all the villains coordinated their attack and they figured out, oh, we can use like Spider-Man villains on X-Men characters and, you know, X-Men villains on Spider-Man characters and Avengers characters. And we can actually outsmart these heroes if we all work together. Uh, and that's pretty standard for Mark Millar. Most of his stories like Wanted and other things, it's always about the villains taking over the world. He's pretty unoriginal in that way, like where that's his constant idea he pops up with all the time. And so uh, that's just what happens here, too. But I actually kind of like Old Man Logan. I think it's a fun story the way it is, even if it is a, a recycled story idea that Mark Millar does, I thought he did enough in it that was unique that made the book very fun to read and really just horrific as well because there's a lot of violence in this book. Uh, Steve McNiven's artwork is amazing. Uh, but in this book, we have a version of Wolverine where the X-Men, we don't know what happened to them at first. And then you find out later when he's talking to Hawkeye that, that the X-Men were killed by Wolverine. Mysterio came in, they upped his, some of the villains upped his powers, his illusion powers so that Wolverine couldn't smell what was really happening. And Mysterio comes into the X-Mansion and tricks Wolverine into thinking that a bunch of villains have attacked. And Wolverine's going around killing all the villains, stabbing them all with his claws. And it turns out none of them were actual villains. It was all the X-Men. So he killed Jubilee, he killed Storm, Cyclops, Xavier, everybody. Um, and obviously the, the movie Logan is loosely based off this, where it's just Logan and Xavier that survive. But, uh, and we never really know what happens at the Xavier school, although there is a, a little reference on the radio that maybe Xavier killed all the students um, in the movie, if you listen carefully, uh, but they don't really flat out say what happened to the students. So in this book, though, Wolverine is on a cross-country trip. Uh, Red Skull is the president of the United States because villains have taken over the world. Like I said, very wanted, very typical for Mark Millar, uh, but the villains have taken over. Red Skull's president. Very few heroes are still left out there, but Hawkeye is, but he's blind. And so he teams up with Wolverine and says, look, I can't see, but I have the spider mobile, the spider buggy. And he's like, so if you just take me across the country to deliver these, you know, mutant growth hormone things or whatever, I, you know, whatever this is, super soldier serum, I got to deliver it to the president. You'll get a pardon. I'll get a pardon and we can continue to live our lives. You'll get enough money to pay off the Hulks because the Hulks, uh, you know, the Incredible Hulk had a bunch of kids, I guess, uh, really grossly. I don't want to explain how. It's very gross. Um, and all of his kids now are like landlords in this area of California and Arizona where they just, you know, they go up to people and say, hey, all right, you got to pay us to live here or we eat you and your family. So they do threaten Wolverine. They say they're going to eat him and his family if he doesn't pay up by the end of the month. So Wolverine says, okay, I'll go on this trip with you, Hawkeye, and we'll go, you know, uh, deliver this stuff to the president. And then along the way, things don't go their way. They actually get chased by a T-Rex that has a symbiote attached to it. And the symbiote uh, or the T-Rex was from the Savage Land and it somehow got out and made it to North America. And they actually explain that in the next book we're going to talk about. But for now, you just have this cool sequence where the symbiote T-Rex is chasing them in the spider buggy. And then Black Bolt shows up and annihilates the symbiote. So we do get to see the death of the symbiote in this one. Um, and then at the end of the story, Wolverine ends up Hawkeye gets killed on the mission and Wolverine kills the president then and cuts off Red Skull's head in vengeance basically since they had him they're the ones who had Hawkeye killed even though he was doing what he was told to do um, and so Wolverine's like nah screw that we're, we're gonna change things around here so he finally finds his balls and and his claws he kills Red Skull and then he goes back home he sees that his family's been killed by the Hulks and he goes full berserker 
and kills all the Hulks, uh, including Bruce Banner uh, at the end. So yeah, really intense book. Uh, but then they also made other books set in the Old Man universe. And one of them was Old Man Hawkeye. And the first trade paperback of Old Man Hawkeye is this great story where uh, you have Hawkeye, you know, he hasn't gone blind yet, but he's found out by Claire, uh, a nurse that knew Luke Cage and everybody, that he will go blind. Uh, you know, his eyesight is going away. And she's like, look, if you want to see something or, or do something with your life uh, that you need eyes for, you better go do it now. And Hawkeye decides, OK, well, there's still some members of the Thunderbolts out there that have betrayed all of us. They, they turned in some of the Avengers and got them killed. So I'm going to go get revenge on all of them. And I want to be able to see their faces <laughs> looking at me, uh, you know, when I kill them. And so he makes a list of the former Thunderbolts that he used to lead and, and be a part of. And then he's like, I'm going to go I'm going to go kill all these guys. And meanwhile, Bullseye is hired by the president to track him down and stop him uh, because he, they think he might be a liability in the future because he's still a hero that lived and he's been lying low. But, you know, obviously now he's outed because he's got this mission. And along the way on the mission, he ends up getting into contact with Multiple Man, which is an X-Men character, and kills Multiple Man, a, a bunch of Multiple Men. But one of them gets away. And when he gets away, he goes into this little nook and cranny cave or whatever and he sees some water and he goes down to drink the water and it turns out it's not water at all it's the symbiote and so multiple man becomes venom in this universe and venom is now able to multiply itself and become a bunch of venoms so really really cool i love that they did this i thought this was a cool take on the character and then they also set it up to where as they're fighting you know uh, hawkeye is trying to outrun bullseye and then along the way, he's killing different members like Atlas and Beetle and other members of the Thunderbolts. And as Hawkeye's going through this list of his, he keeps encountering multiple man um, at Murder World, uh, you know, which is Arcade's place. And so he decides, all right, we're going to hunker down with Kate Bishop. He finds Kate along the way, who's, you know, they're all older now because, you know, they're, they're aging. It's uh, pretty cool. I like that about the Old Man Logan universe is that you get to see older versions of characters like Old Man Quill, you know, Peter Quill. You get to see all these characters actually age into things, uh, which we don't get a lot of in the comic books in main continuity for various reasons. So, uh, so seeing Kate Bishop and Hawkeye teaming up, fighting against multiple man venoms and defeating them uh, was really cool. And then when they beat them, they actually lead them into a ravine and in this open area they're like yeah there's a t-rex here from the savage land and uh, and so they drive the last symbiote they kill all the other symbiotes burn them down and there's one symbiote that remains on one multiple man so as he, they're being chased that's when the t-rex shows up and eats that multiple man and then ingests the symbiote and boom that's why years later we have a t-rex symbiote so it kind of tells you the origin of that version of the symbiote so yeah, or, or that version of the T-Rex symbiote and how they ended up together. So yeah, pretty neat. I thought this was a fun two books, you know, Old Man Logan, Old Man Hawkeye. I really loved Old Man Hawkeye as someone who's liked that character but never loved him. Um, but I did like some of his stuff in Thunderbolts and I like the Thunderbolts in general. So to see a book that tackled that and then brought in Bullseye and other characters, like really, really well done. I thought it was just awesome. Like Ethan Sachs who wrote it and Marco Coquetto who drew the book, who's currently working on Daredevil and stuff. Amazing artist. I love Marco's work. And, and Ethan Sachs, this kind of brought my attention to his skills. And I've been following his writing career ever since because I really love this book so much. So it bought him a lot of good graces with me for sure. Uh, but yeah, Old Man Logan, Old Man Hawkeye. If you're out there, you want to check these books out. They're still available in print. Volume one of Old Man Hawkeye is where you can find the symbiote stuff. But I would recommend buying the complete volume that has all 12 issues in it. It's amazing. And then Old Man Logan, I think was like a nine or 10 issue story. And that's all in one trade paperback as well. And I'd recommend picking that up too. This next one, I don't have a ton of information on because this only happened in one book on one panel. Uh, but this is also X-Men related. And Uncanny X-Force number 13, the X-Men, once again, led by Wolverine and Psylocke on the team and everything. And they're fighting a archangel that has been converted into becoming the new body of Apocalypse. And so they have to fight one of their longtime friends and Psylocke's former lover in this big battle called the Dark Angel Saga. And in part three of that saga, in issue 13 of uh, Uncanny X-Force, the X-Men end up going back to the Age of Apocalypse universe, or at least a version, a potential version, future version of it, where Wolverine has become the new Apocalypse. And he's trying to get Jean Grey to side with him so they can rebirth the mutant population in some way. And so while they're on this mission, they come across legions of enemies that have sided with Wolverine and his new form as Apocalypse. So it's like Wolverine versus Wolverine, but the second Wolverine uh, from Age of Apocalypse Universe has become like an, he's become like an Apocalypse. So, uh, but he has all these minions and one of the minions on one of the pages on one of the panels, if you zoom in very carefully, you'll see there is a Captain America Venom symbiote. 
and I literally don't know any information. I try to do some research to see if there was a backstory on it or if this character ever popped up again because in Age of Apocalypse, uh, Spider-Man was actually dead and Gwen Stacy lived and, uh, and there was like Hulk never became green again. He stayed gray. There's all these cool little side stories in the X-Men X-Universe books that took place during Age of Apocalypse that kind of tell you a little bit about what happened to characters like Daredevil and, and other characters like Captain America and stuff. And, and, and so this was kind of neat because I'm like, I don't really know if I know the story of what happened to Captain America in Age of Apocalypse. I think he fought World War II and then was frozen and then never woke up. I don't know if that's the, the full story or if they did something else with him later on. I can't remember. It's been years since I read that book. Uh, but in this one, you get to see him as a Venom. So somehow a Captain America, you know, bonds with a symbiote. And who knows, maybe that happened during the Secret Wars since there was no Spider-Man. Maybe it happened to Captain America. Like, who knows the backstory? But in this one, I just thought I'd mention it because it took place in an X-Men book. And it, like I said, you have to zoom in and look at one panel to see him. But uh, he looks pretty cool. And so if you know the backstory of this character uh, or know more than I just said here, please let me know what it is down below. Or if you just want to speculate and come up with your own backstory, I'd love to hear it down below too. And Uncanny X-Force 13, that was written by Rick Remender at art by Scott Eaton and Mark Brooks. And you can pick that up. It's in Volume 3 or Dark Angel Saga Volume 1, I think, is how they call it as well. So, But it's in Issue 13 if you just want to pick up the issue itself. Or if you have the Marvel Unlimited app, you can read it there. Since you already paid for the service, you can read it on there because that's where I read it. And I'm glad I came across that book again and remembered it because I was like, oh, wait, wasn't there a symbiote in Age of Apocalypse? I'm like, there was. So, yeah, I was able to squeeze that into this episode and just tell you a little bit about them. All right. And the last story we have to talk about here is not specifically an X-Men book, but the villain of the story is a big X-Men villain. And it does feature a lot of X-Men characters as long with, you know, along with Avengers and Spider-Man and everyone else. But this was a book that came out, it, it came out, I think, two years ago in 2021, and it ended in 2022, which was called Dark Ages. And this has a very unique symbiote in it. Um, and like I said, this symbiote is also a horseman of Apocalypse. So we have a couple different servants of Apocalypse in this episode. In fact, the only one that wasn't was the old man Logan universe Venom uh, symbiote. But all the other ones we talked about today were servants of Apocalypse in some way. And this one is no different. So in this story... A celestial showed up to Earth and there's a big event happened. All the power on Earth went out and the few heroes that survived, they're trying to, you know, and it's a lot of the brainy guys like, you know, Tony Stark and Reed Richards and Sue Storm. It's all those like the really smart people, Wakanda, Black Panther, Storm, who are still married as uh, Peter Parker, like a lot of people that could use technology to their benefit now have zero and have no way of generating new technology or new like uh, lights or anything like that. So they're kind of back to the dark ages, right? And so, uh, so they're fighting against Apocalypse, who has now taken over the world. He's in you know, control of this uh, new celestial that showed up, the Unmaker, and he has him imprisoned and asleep down below under his lab. And then he has different people working for him, including Purple Man, who he uses to brainwash characters like Reed Richards and Tony Stark to try to get them to do his bidding so they can figure out a way to use the Unmaker to you know restart the power of the world and bring everything back. So basically, Apocalypse has kind of come across this uh, mentality where he's like, maybe all humans aren't worthless. Like, you know, mutants are the next evolution, but guys like Reed Richards and Tony Stark, I never realized how insanely smart they really are. And they could, you know, they could be used for my benefit. So that's kind of where Apocalypse is. And he has his horsemen. And one of them is a symbiote creature that looks very unique. Uh, and he just show up because in this book, we have Spider-Man who's still around. He's got Mary Jane. Uh, and then he has his daughter, May Parker, who is developing powers. And the story starts with the lights go out and every all the heroes that get into a big battle and a lot of them die and lose. And a lot of villains die and lose too. Um, and then it flash forwards like six or seven years where May Parker is like a six or seven year old kid. And Peter and all of them, they live you know, reclusive lives, like in caves and stuff like this. And they're trying to bring it all back, you know, trying to find a way to save the world and uh, and see what they can do to stop Apocalypse and figure out what his true plan is. And they eventually do when Tony Stark gets tricked by Captain America, but it turns out it's someone else. I don't want to spoil every beat of the story, but uh, he gets brought in, taken over by Purple Man and starts helping Apocalypse finish his vision. And so now there's a ticking clock and the heroes are like, we got to stop Apocalypse before he gets Tony to destroy the universe for him um, or or change the universe to the way Apocalypse wants it changed. So we got to, you know, we got, we don't have a lot of time to figure this out. And so as they're battling through all the different horsemen, all the different minions of Apocalypse, they come across a symbiote uh, that is half Venom and half Carnage. And we get his backstory once we find out 
who's wearing the symbiote, uh, which is Miles Morales. He talks about how after the lights went out, he ended up finding the Venom symbiote and bonding with it. And for a while, it was good. They were going around trying to, you know, help people the best they could and try to save innocent lives, people that were trapped under buildings and things like that. And then unfortunately, one of the times they try to save someone, the Carnage symbiote was there and bonded to them and kind of took over. And then Apocalypse found him and turned him into an acolyte of Apocalypse. So he has this Carnage Venom hybrid symbiote on Miles Morales is like this big threat. And it's like fighting Blade. I loved it. It was so cool. You get to see Blade fighting a symbiote. You get to see all these other characters that you don't normally get to see in the situation fighting a symbiote. And it's a really cool hybrid black and red symbiote. I thought this was just really neat. It was a cool way to use Miles in the story. And then once they save him and take the symbiotes off him, he becomes a big asset of telling them what is going on and how they can get into Apocalypse's lab and, and try to stop him. So really, really neat. Uh, I don't want to spoil the ending of the story, but it's a lot of fun. And I would recommend checking out Dark Ages. If you can, it's all in one trade payback. I think it's just like a five, six issue series and it's all in one trade and you get a pretty good amount of Miles symbiote. I don't know what to call him, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's pretty cool and he's uh, consistent throughout the book. He shows up, I think, first in issue two, they tease him, and then he comes in in issue four and five, like in a big way. So really cool, all alternate universe stuff, all symbiote related, Venom mostly related too, uh, because most of the stuff we talked about today, or all of it, was, uh, I think, the black costume, the Venom costume. The only one I'm not 100% sure on is the Uncanny X-Force one, but based on the picture, it looks like Captain America with a spider symbol on it. So, uh, you know, I'm going to guess, okay, maybe that's just Venom in general. And so this is just another wave of multiverse stories where we got other versions of the Venom symbiote and one that bonded with Carnage. And we'll do more of these episodes for sure. But I wanted to put all these together because they were all circling around X-Men type stories, or at least, like I said, with Dark Ages, a story where an X-Men villain was the main threat. And it was Apocalypse who seems to... That idea seems to get recycled a lot where one of his horsemen in these alternate universes is a Venom symbiote. Uh, so yeah, pretty neat. Nice little connection through line for all these. And uh, hopefully something that I brought to your attention. Maybe some of you didn't know about these stories. Maybe all of you did and you've been dying for me to get to them. So I'm, fi I'm glad I finally did. So let me know what your thoughts are of any of these stories, all of them, you know, one in specific, whatever you want to talk about down below. Let's keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.